what's happening in Hardwood Nation. The girls' regular season is over, and the boys are entering their final week before the tournament, so every game from this point on is the real deal. Hello, I'm your host, Sean Knighting. We've known who the girls' teams are facing for a week now, and the boys just learned who stands between them and posting the glory this afternoon. So without losing any more time, let's tip it off. You hear my voice throughout the entire show, so I'm going to tap out for just a second and let Danny and Josh, our online hosts, do the talking. Guys, take it away. Gladly, Sean. You know we like to talk, so <laughs> let's talk about some huge changes in the TVC this week. The HH staff was on top of it the past seven days, and here's what they're bringing this episode. Patrick Klinger is on deck with all of the updates in Bulldog Country. The boys had a great week with some new standouts while the girls are derailing in the last stretch of the season. And just down the road, the Alexander boys are hanging out at number two in the Ohio while the girls get a three-way piece of the crown. Josh Vermillion will share the highs and lows in Albany. Sticking with the TVC Ohio, Meg's reporter Andrew Holman talks about the Marauders' victory over Alexander. And in their final sprint of the season, the girls fell to Jackson. And moving over to the Hawking, David Michael talks Trimble. The boys rebounded in a big win over Southern, and the girls finished just under 500. Up next, NY reporter Justin Holbrock brings you good news. The boys moved up in the rankings after a win over Wellston, and the girls still hold a piece of the TVC Ohio crown. The Vinton County boys keep the number one spot in the TVC Ohio after losing to Alexander. Corbin Bagford discusses their week as well as a successful week for the Lady Vikings. The problems are still present in FedHawk. Eric Threat and Rachel Walbrown will explain if each team has started to make any changes. And Ryan Lewis said ciao to the Italian Lady Eagle. She tells her story of playing basketball in America. And Eastern reporter Megan Stampert will break down the boys' week. Now, Sean, you're 0 for 2 in your Hero of the Week guesses. So who do you think the heroes are this week? I'm going to have to go with Rachel Richardson of Alexander. And I know he won it last week, but Bryce Guthrie from Trimble, he also had a huge week this week. Well, we will be back later on in the show to confirm or deny those guesses. All right, guys, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks. With the postseason looming, both teams in the Plains are facing new challenges. Athens reporter Patrick Klinger joins me now. And Patrick, how are the Bulldogs playing towards the end of their season? Uh, you know, Sean, the beauty of tourney time is that you can throw all the records out the window. You know, the boys are still adjusting to life without Griffin Lutz. And the girls, you know, they're the ones that had a little bit of a bumpy road this week. They had the privilege of taking on two of the top teams in the TVC Ohio in Alexander and Vinton County. And, you know, on Monday, the Bulldogs... The Lady Bulldogs statistically played one of the worst games of their season. They were dismantled in the alley, 64 to 11. Athens shot four of 37 from the field, just 11% on the night, Sean, and committed 26 turnovers. You gotta credit the Lady Spartan stifling defense, though, as they held the green and gold to one combined point in the second and fourth quarters. But you know, Sean, it's just safe to say that this is just one to forget. So a tough L, but they played much better on senior night, and they still fell short to the Lady Vikings. Oh uh, yeah, but despite that loss, it was really great to see all of those celebrating the careers of Lexi McCollum, Claire DeBruin, Taylor Gregory, and Sophie Miller, you know, they're going to play a huge role uh, once the season, uh, once their postseason hopes uh, come at them. And, you know, but overall, the Lady Bulldogs have really been playing much better basketball as of late. Here's a little proof that Coach McNeil's process he's been preaching is really starting to take shape. You know, as you can see, the defensive effort has significantly improved in the latter half of the season. And, you know, even though those numbers don't quite show it, that offense has been a lot more efficient. And now they're just going to have to find a way to put all the pieces together come the postseason. Now, talk about a team that's really turning up the intensity over the past few weeks. The Athens boys, they've won seven of their last eight games. Oh, yeah. You know, earlier this week, I got to, I got to talk to head coach Jeff Skinner. And he told me that of all the teams that he has coached, and we know that he's had some really, really good ones, this team has developed the most over the course of this season. And they continued that with a big 57-41 to 41 road win over River Valley. They used all that intensity that you're talking about on defense. They held the Raiders to 12 of 70 shooting from the field. Sean, I don't know what's more impressive, the fact that the Raiders offense put up 70 shots or the fact that they missed 58 of them. But either way, Dalton Cozart's 16 points and Zakaya Saltzman's 15 led the Bulldogs to the dub. And they're just red hot right now. And Sean, without Griffin, Lutz, this bench is getting a lot of development. They're getting a lot of time in these games, and that could prove really crucial once uh, that postseason comes around. Yeah, we know dealing with the loss of Lutz is really tough, but we'll see if they can step up and get maybe a postseason win. Thanks, Pat. Both Alexander teams have been playing well, and both are involved in battles for first place in the TVC Ohio. So Josh Vermillion joins me now. And Josh, start with the girls. They had two huge conference wins this week. 
Well, Sean, it's official. Alexander, Vinton County, and Nelsonville, York will all share the TVC title this year after the Lady Spartans had blowout wins over Athens and Wellston, and it was a week full of broken records for the Richardson sisters. It took Leah just 45 seconds to score on a breakaway layup Monday night, officially making her the all-time leading scorer for Alexander girls basketball as the Lady Spartans cruised to that win 64 to 11. Then Thursday night, Rachel put her mark on the record book. She told us that Steph Curry is her favorite player and she was doing her best impression, knocking down nine threes on route to 38 points, which were both school records and more than the entire Wellston team. So now that they've got a share of that TVC crown, it's time for them to focus on the tournament. Yeah, the Lady Spartans were awarded the number one seed for their sectional bracket and will play the winner of New Lexington and Zane Trace this Saturday at Athens High School. Alexander will be favored throughout the tournament, but won't be able to take anything, any games off. Anything can happen come postseason play, but this team is rolling right now. They know how to play in close games and will need that experience in the coming weeks. Now, the boys had a good week as well, but it was a little bit bittersweet. Yeah, Sean, Vaughn Grigsby, coach of the Alexander baseball team and father of forward Shea Grigsby, passed away on Tuesday after a battle with cancer. Mason Chapman honored that loss by wearing Shea's jersey during the game against Wellston Tuesday night and the team responded by playing with heart and getting the win for the Alexander family, 73-47. to 47. Yeah, as you said, it takes a lot of heart to win with that kind of adversity, but they had a quick turnaround and they had two more big TVC games. Oh, for sure. They hosted Vinton County Wednesday night and they avenged a blowout loss from earlier in the year with a 59-54 to 54 win. Seth Richardson led them with 18 points, including 16 in a first half that was dominated by Alexander. Some uncharacteristic turnovers by Alex in the second half let Vinton County back into it, but ultimately the Spartans grabbed their eighth TVC win of the season. Friday night, it was a different story though. Alexander fell to Megs 63 to 55. Alexander really didn't play that bad, but it's hard to win when you give up 33 free throw attempts. But you know what, Sean, the Spartans will be rooting for Megs next week as a win over Vinton County would set up a potential three-way tie for the conference. Wow, so we could have a three-way tie in both the boys and the girls. Thanks, Josh. For up to the minute TVC updates right on your phone, the only place to go is the official Hardwood Heroes Twitter account at Hardwood Heroes. You can also follow my host account at hhost underscore Sean, and you can interact with our, both of our accounts throughout the show. January losses to Vinton County and Alexander in the span of five days convinced many people that this wouldn't be Meg's year, but the Marauders weren't persuaded and their TVC hopes are still alive. So Meg's reporter Andrew Homan joins me now. And Andrew, what are the Marauders doing to make this final push? Well, Sean, I talked last week about how Coach Ed Fry wants his team to attack the basket. The new strategy led to a crucial win over Alexander on Friday night. 33 free throws against Alexander led to 24 of the Marauders' 63 points. Megs was in the bonus for over seven minutes of the fourth quarter, and the three-pointer from Christian Maddox was the only Marauder field goal in the fourth. But it didn't matter. Megs' aggressive style is paying off and will lead to a share of the TVC Ohio title if the Marauders win out. That won't be easy as they face Nelsonville, York, and more importantly, Vinton County. To beat the Vikings this time around, the Marauders need to stay calm. If they drive to the hoop and don't force shots, expect this game to be big in the moment and in the standings. Looking at the Vikings, all they need is one win this week over Megs or Wilson to win a share. Two wins gives them the outright title. Finally, like Josh Vermillion mentioned earlier, if Athens beats NY and Megs beats Vinton County on Tuesday, the winner of Alex versus Athens could will share the conference with the Marauders and Vikings, so a whole lot could change. Yeah, so this week is going to be very exciting for the Marauders, but it's anything but for the ladies. To say the least, Sean, after the Lady Marauders lost to Athens this last week, I was convinced they would bounce back, and they did win over Wellston, but Megs didn't bounce back until the fourth quarter. Megs faltered early, and then Coach Scott Cleland made a big change to his defense. The Lady Marauders played a zone for mo the majority of the season, but Cleland had to switch back to the man defense because his team simply couldn't handle playing the zone. Then on Thursday, Megs couldn't get things moving once again. They backtracked to some of the issues they faced earlier in the season. Foul trouble defined this game for the Lady Marauders. The Iron Ladies scored 33 of their 44 points from the free throw line. Megs pretty much gave this one away. The Lady Marauders offense is looking for answers again too. They've struggled to score more than 40 points for most of 2016, and Megs now looks to a playoff game against Vinton County. Not a good matchup when, when a team is looking for some solid ground. Yeah, it's certainly going to be a tough one. Thanks, Andrew. 
For exclusive behind the scenes so content, the best thing to do is add us on Snapchat at Hardwood Heroes. And while our reporters are at games throughout the week, each night we will have a designated Snapchat game so you can follow us for in-game updates. You can also send us your snaps and they might be featured as our Snap of the Week. The Trimble Tomcats started out their week with a loss to Waterford last Saturday, and the team switched places in the AP poll. David Michael is with me now, and the Tomcats, they were able to rebound. That's right, Sean. Now, that three-point loss marked the beginning of a long road ahead for the Tomcats. It was the first of five games away from Gloucester. However, stop number two put the Tomcats right back on track when they topped the Tornadoes 71-40. A big offensive night from Bryce Guthrie and Randy Hickson led the team in the right direction. And the 71-point performance had the Tomcats amped up for their Friday night matchup against Federal Hawking. Trimble dominated from the tip-off on a 9-0 run in the first minute. In the first minute 20. We saw the classic cats we've come to know and love, putting on pressure and capitalizing on every opportunity. There was a lot of hard, but legal play. Now, they've corrected their course, but they still can't see the light at the end of the TVC tunnel. Am I right about that, David? Aren't you always, Sean? Trimble's still in a fight for the title. South Galley is the main competition. Their next matchup Friday decides the entire conference. Depending on who wins, both teams could end in a tie 16-4, or one could run away with it with a record of 17-3. Waterford's not down and out either though. If the Tomcats and Rebels uh, t both take a win and the Wildcats win all three of their remaining conference games, then we could be looking at a three-way tie for the TBC Hawking Crown. So the boys, they were able to turn their week around, but the girls, not so much, they lost to Eastern. Now, Sean, at face value it is a loss, but I cannot emphasize enough how much we saw improvement. Head coach Joe Richards told us last time they got the big guys going up against the perennial power that is Eastern. But after exactly a month in between, in the second matchup, those eyes were full of fire. One of the biggest differences could be seen in Nikki Kish. First time around, Kish visibly wasn't in it, only putting up seven points and giving up against the larger Eastern team. This time, she, quoting Coach Richards here, played her butt off. She put up 25 points and scrapped for every ball. Part of this confidence might have come from having a full roster to back her up. Last meetup, Peyton Dixon, Caitlin Spears, Emily Ward, and Morgan Murphy were all out for either injury or disciplinary reasons. Having Murphy back for a full game this time definitely made a difference as she added 10 points. Now, Coach Richards said he was happy with this game, and he definitely should be. Other than a few fourth quarter mistakes, Trimble has shown significant improvement in the second half of the season. Yeah, we'll see if those improvements can propel them to a postseason victory. Thanks, David. It's been a couple weeks since we've seen Nelsonville York reporter Justin Holbrock, but he's back at it again. So, Justin, we know there's a three-way tie for first in the TVC Ohio, but the Lady Vikings had their work cut out for them to just clinch a share of the conference. Well, there's no doubt about it, Sean. In order to win their first league title in 10 years, the Lady Buckeyes had to beat River Valley on the road. The Lady Raiders gave Vinton County a run for its money on Monday night, and it took a dominant fourth quarter from the Vikings to pull out the seven-point win. Now, River Valley brought that same intensity against NY on Thursday, trailing by only three at the end of the first half. But the Lady Buckeyes scored 19 points in the third, taking a 13-point lead into the fourth quarter. NY exploded in the third by forcing River Valley to turn the ball over, which led to easy baskets, while Caitlin Hurd dropped 21 points in arguably her best game of the season. We talked to NY's leader Jesse Addis after the game and asked if last year's heartbreaking loss to Athens, which cost them the title, added extra motivation for this year. Most definitely it was, and we know we had opponents that we needed to beat, and even though we did lose, it's, we still tied, which is a great thing. And it should feel great. A share of the TVC Ohio is something this team should be proud of, but you better believe that she and the Lady Buckeyes are not going to settle on just winning the conference. They've got one more regular season game on Monday, but this team already has its sights set on a long tournament run, and that starts next Saturday when they take on Crooksville at Athens High School at 345. So, Justin, it was an exciting week for the girls out in Nelsonville, but were the boys able to build off of their win last Saturday? Well, Sean, the odds were stacked against the boys on Tuesday with the team facing Vinton County. The Vikings proved to be too much for NY from start to finish, beating the Buckeyes by more than 30 points for the second time this season. The thing that hurt NY the most was the same kryptonite it's had all season long, turnovers. Those turnovers led to easy baskets for the Vikings all night. And easy baskets were the theme of the night for both teams. Too often, the Buckeyes got, got caught playing lazy defense, letting the Vikings drive right to the basket. Meanwhile, the Buckeyes had a hard time capitalizing on wide open layups and missed quite a few high percentage shots. And it didn't get better late in the week as the boys fell to Wellston by five points on Friday. The Rockets have three wins in the TVC Ohio this year, and Sean, two of those have come against the Buckeyes. Yeah, those Rockets really gave the Buckeyes fits. Thanks, Justin. 
For written and video recaps of the final games of the 2016 season, head over to our website, woeb.org slash heroes. All the links on our Twitter account will lead you there, where you can click around or search for all the news regarding your favorite teams. You can also find the full tournament seedings and playoff schedules. Since starting 11-0, the Vinn County Vikings have played 500 basketball. Even with troubles in recent weeks, Vikings still hold sole possession of first place in the TVC Ohio, so Corbin Backford is here with the latest on those Vinton County Vikings. Sean, the biggest factor that's hindered the Vikings has been the tight defensive pressure and good closeouts of its opponents. In its 59-54 loss to Alexander on Wednesday night, easy shots were hard to come by for Vinton County. The Vikings shooters always had hands in their faces. That means guys like Jordan Albright and Nalen Yates, normally knock down three-point shooters, couldn't get going because they had no room to work. But despite the shaky play of late, the Vikings are still in control of their own destiny. If they win out, they clinch that TBC Ohio title outright. But they'll have a big test on Tuesday when they take on Megs. The Vikings beat the Marauders 73-54 three weeks ago. But both early season wins for Vinton County over Athens and Alexander were blowouts too. But slow starts in the rematches led to Vinton County defeats. So you know Matt Combs will have his team ready to play from jump. And then the Vikings actually wrap up TBC Ohio play on Friday at Wellston. Yeah, so the Lady Vikings, they didn't get that outright TBC Ohio that they were hoping for. But co-conference champion is still something to be proud of. Yeah, they'll have to split that crown mean girl style, if you will. And most teams will be happy with a three-way conference title, but Vinton County has bigger goals in mind. Michaela Puckett and Jalen Hale lead a roster of six seniors, and this tournament run will be the culmination of all the hard work they've put in throughout high school. But if the Lady Vikings want to make a deep run, it'll be up to role players on the team. Teams will have focus on Puckett and Hale, and that's when girls like senior guard Hannah Radabaugh, point guard Aaron Jones, Katie Fee off the bench, even Samantha Thompson down low will have to step up. Their good play this season earned them a number three seed. They'll take on Megs on Monday. Vinton County is 2-0 against the Lady Marauders this season, but the first of those two wins was only by five points. So, you know, Rod Bentley will tell his team to watch out for Megs. Certainly going to be a close game. Thanks, Corbin. In addition to WOUB.org, all of our video recaps from the week are on our YouTube page, WOUB PBS. You can also find full episodes of our show, individual so show segments and packages, and we don't want you to miss a minute of TDC action, and you don't have to. You can also find other stories important to you and your communities. Federal Hawking has been scraping the bottom of the barrel in the weekly conference recaps, but Rachel Walbrown and Eric Three join me now. We're going to talk about their fate in the playoffs. Well, I don't know about scraping, Sean, but these ladies sure have been scrapping on the court, averaging around 20 team fouls per game. But they come out with the same level of intensity against every opponent. The problem is that FedHawk finds new ways to lose games. They've lost from missing shots, failing to secure rebounds, getting into foul trouble. It's always something new. In their last conference game on Monday against Southern, fouling became their newest hurdle. Heading into the fourth, FedHawk was only down by four, but ultimately lost by 11. Half of Southern's 13 points that quarter came from the free throw line. Lately, the Lady Lancers have been efficient on defense. Five of their last eight opponents couldn't reach 45 points because FedHawk brought that energy on defense. If they want to win their playoff game against South Gallia Monday, that intensity has to be there. Now, these ladies have shown that they have the, they have the ability to shoot, play defense, and rebound the ball. They just rarely do it all in one game. And once they have all their talents put together, winning wouldn't be such a rare occurrence. Sadly, winning has been even more rare for the boys. They've lacked consistency all year. So this week, Coach Jamie Justice decided to switch things up on purpose. He implemented a 2-3 zone against Wahama Tuesday that kept the White Falcons grounded at first. It definitely helped their penetration problem to win. But if they want to win, they have to finish games as strong as they start. FedHawk had a 24-9 lead in that game, but lost 62-54. Now Friday's game against Trimble may have been different, but the outcome was just the same. FedHawk lost 73-43 in a very intense matchup, but they made some very important changes. The Lancers' biggest adjustment was that they played hard without fouling. They handled that problem, but the reason for the beatdown was turnovers. Trumbull forced six turnovers, six turnovers, in the first 78 seconds of the game. FedHawk had issues getting past Trimble's 1-3-1 press, and Coach Justice elaborated on it. So long and big and lengthy, they just looked like there was, they looked like there was 10 on 5 out there at times. Every time we would uh, get the ball in, uh, to the middle and we'd look up, they were, they were, uh, they were all over the floor. They and since these guys can't get any taller, they're going to have to learn how to better execute the play. Yeah, guys, we'll see if they can pick it up at the end of the season. Thanks for joining us. The Eastern Lady Eagles are in second place in the TVC Hawking and are going into the playoffs following a regular season finale win. Eastern reporter Ryan Lewis is here, and in addition to the team having a special season, there's also a very special player on this team. Right, Sean. Now, can you imagine living in another country 
for a year, going to school there, and playing a sport you've never played before at the varsity level? Well, that's exactly what Annalisa Beano is doing at Eastern. Ciao, mi chiamo Annalisa e quest'anno ho giocato a basketball per Lady Eagles. After traveling almost 16 hours and nearly 4,400 miles from her hometown of Esti, Italy, Annalisa Beano finds similarities and differences in her everyday life here in Reedsville, Ohio. I can move just walking or with my motorcycle or whatever. And uh, here you need to have a car. But the good thing here is that you do sport at school. In Italy, you have to be in a club. Even though Annalisa is in a different country, education doesn't seem to slow her down, as she boasts straight A's in the classroom. I do hear from Mr. Bost, the principal, you know, how good she is. Not only is her work in the classroom impressive, her play on the volleyball court is just as good. She helped the Eagles win the district championship and even joined a local club team. I've played for five years, but actually I have to tell that this year, I think I've, it's been the best year of my volleyball career. Even though Annalise's home is on the volleyball court, she's made great strides on the basketball court. That's the first year I actually play basketball because in Italy I used to play volleyball and I tried track, so here this is the first year I play basketball, so I'm learning. She doesn't give herself credit. She really didn't know anything about basketball. Before I couldn't even touch basketball. Now I can run some plays. I'm getting better. I'm improving a lot here. I'm glad. Once Annalisa returns to Italy, she'll finish out high school. After high school, she mentioned that she would like to come back to the States to attend college. But in order to do so, she needed to get a volleyball scholarship. And Sean, I don't think she'll have any trouble with that. No, I don't think so either. We'll certainly be rooting for her. Thanks, Ryan. The boys, for the boys out in Eastern, the week started sour, and it was a roller coaster for the rest of the way. Eastern reporter Megan Stamper joins me now. And Megan, it seemed like the Eagles were on a roll earlier, but that coaster has slowed down recently. Yeah, Sean, after picking up three straight wins in the middle of January, the Eagles have cooled down a little bit but that's not to take away from them. They have had to face the toughest competition the TVC Hawking has to offer. After beating the Nelsonville York Buckeyes, the Eagles dropped a 15 point loss to Trimble and then traveled to Waterford to face the Wildcats. Eastern was in the game the entire first half, but Waterford, Waterford scored six unanswered points heading into the half, and the Eagles just could not recover. So why wasn't Eastern able to climb out of that hole? Sean, Andrew Thyman of Waterford was a huge reason the Eagles couldn't get back into it. They usually had to double team him, and that allowed him to dish the ball back out to the open guy outside to hit the open three. Waterford went on an eight to five run to start the second half, and it was way too much for the Eagles to come back from. Dylan Swatzel and Jet Facemeyer combined for 30 points, but the rest of the team really struggled offensively. So tough losses to Waterford and South Gallia this week, but the rest of the schedule looks a little lighter. Sean, the boys picked up another win on Wednesday against Wahama, and it looks like they have a chance to finish the season with two more victories. They faced Federal Hawking on Tuesday, and they beat them by 12 earlier this season. And to end the regular season, they host the Southern Tornadoes, who they handled with a 10-point win back on January 12th. Picking up wins in both these games is crucial to get some momentum heading into the tournament. They also need to stop falling behind early because they struggle to get back into the games. Back into games. They go into panic mode when they get down, and that leads to sloppy play. If they can calm down and set up their offense, they can make some noise these last few games and heading into the tournament. Yeah, we'll see if they can regain that mid-January form to go into the playoffs. Thanks, Megan. We are just about out of time, but before we go, let's take a look at the standings. Going into the last week of the regular season, the top four teams in the TVC Ohio all have chances to win the conference. And it's coming down to the wire in the Hawking as well. Trimble, Waterford, and South Gallia are all still in the race for that conference championship. Now let's look at the girls' tournament brackets, starting with Division II, Section 1. The three-seed Vinton County Lady Vikings will take on the six-seed Meg's Lady Marauders this upcoming Thursday. And in D2, the winner of Athens South Ga Athens Gallia Academy excuse me, will face top-seeded Warren. That game will be played tomorrow. And the Alexander Lady Spartan Spartans have the number one seed throughout the Division Three Section 2 and will play the winner of New Lex and Zane Trace on Saturday. In Division Three Sectional 3, the Nelsonville York Lady Buckeyes will play the six seed Crooksville Lady Ceramics on Saturday as well. And the Waterford Lady Wildcats may have lost their number one ranking in the state, but they held on to the number one seed in Division Four Section 1. The Lady Wildcats will take on the winner of Federal Hawking in South Gallia, and the Trimble Lady Tomcats will play green on Wednesday. 
And finally, in Division 4, Section 2, the two-seed Eastern Lady Eagles play the winner of St. Joseph's and Miller. All right, your online hosts, Danny and Josh, they are back to let you know their picks for the coveted Hero of the Week title. Hopefully, I'll get them right this week. Danny, how about you start us off? Sorry to tell you, Sean, but you actually got my pick wrong this week. You may be surprised by this, but the boys' Hero of the Week is Dalton Cozart. This Athens sophomore really stepped out of his comfort zone to help lead his team, especially when Griffin Lutz, he went down and Cozart immediately picked up the slack. He normally plays shooting guard and he stepped into the point guard position and he has become the Bulldogs, really their top playmaker. Every time Cozart has the ball, he's a threat. He's been creating his own shots and shots for his team and putting it down from the three point line. His intensity, it's really been amped up these past couple of games. He plays with a quickness and this aggressive ball pressure on defense that if you're watching any of your game, any of their games, you can clearly see it's rattling whoever he's defending. And Coach Skinner has said that the Bulldogs' improvement really stems from Cozart as well as Zakiah Saltzman's composure. And he's really proud of how Cozart has stood up. And I gotta say, although he isn't racking up those crazy stats like our normal hero of the weeks are, his leadership and flexibility as a player is something that really can't go unnoticed, so I had to give it to him this week. Well, Danny, there is no doubt that he had a heroic week, but if you want to talk about talent, then look no further than the Lady Spartans. It was a record-breaking week in Alexander, and that's why our Hero of the Week award goes to Leah and Rachel Richardson. You heard Josh talk about the Richardsons earlier, so you must know that I couldn't pick just one of them as Hero of the Week. Both of them put up heroic performances by shattering three school records. With 10 points against Athens on Monday, Leah broke the girls' all-time scoring record with 1,239 points, and as of Thursday, she has 1,245. And not wanting to be overshadowed by her older sister, Rachel, Rachel excuse me, put up 17 points and seven rebounds. However, her big night was on Thursday in their win at Wellston. The young freshman showed why she deserved to be named Hero of the Week along with her sister when she broke the school record for most three-pointers in a game with nine three-pointers. That's right, you heard me right, nine, along with 38 points total to break the record for most, sing most points in a single game. And not to mention, she scored the first 14 points of the game after knocking down four threes. And according to Ohio High School Athletic Association, Rachel is tied 14th in Ohio history for three-point field goals in a game. Man, both Richardsons are really amazing me this season and rewriting those record books. And so I'm excited to see how they perform in the postseason. So, Sean, you got one of, I guess, three of our hero guesses. <laughs> hey, I'm just happy with getting one this week. So thanks, guys. Well, there you have it, folks. That is all the time we have for this week's show. There's no better time than tourney time. And remember, you can keep up with us on social media for recaps of all those games. And don't forget to tune into our show next week. But until then, I'm your host, Sean Knighty, reminding you to be heroic.